You are listening to the Chicago House Radio Podcast. Tune in weekly to hear the latest house music news, events and interviews with the hottest DJs and producers from around the world. And now here's your host, Lloyd Dev. Welcome to the Chicago House Radio Podcast. I am your host, Lloyd Dev of Chicago House Radio. This is episode number two. And if you just found us, this is a podcast that goes into the uh, culture of house music. All the different aspects, the major players, the events, the producers, the entertainers, the promoters. We bring them right here to the Chicago House Radio Podcast channel. And we talk all the major issues facing house music today. So you found yourself in the best place. If you haven't, visit us on the internet. Well, we are an internet radio station. And we can be found at ChicagoHouseRadio.com. ChicagoHouseRadio.com. Streaming house music 24-7. And hear the best of underground soulful Afro house. It's played 24 hours a day. And if you're just not checking out the uh, podcast, if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay caught up on the latest uh, podcast from Chicago House Radio. And uh, we're also available on Apple iTunes. Uh, Subscribe there as well so you can stay informed, so you can actually stay in the loop. It's the place to be. And of course, we are available on other major platforms. You can catch us also over on SoundCloud. At SoundCloud.com. It's Lloyd Dev with Chicago House Radio. Look us up and stay subscribed. And that way, you will be knowing, you will be informed of what's going on. So, this is episode number two of the Chicago House Radio podcast. Really get myself situated and uh, getting used to the simple fact of actually doing a podcast and doing it consistently and doing it on a regular basis. I'm geeked up, man. I'm really excited with some of the stuff that we got planned for this podcast and the up and coming shows right here. I can't wait to really get that cracking open for you. want to let you know today's podcast man something real special got a nice uh, interview coming up with Carl Bias of Master C&J and if uh, you're familiar with Master C&J they have done a tremendous amount of work in the house music community and we talk personally with Carl Bias he's a member of Master C&J and we get his insight and analysis on house music the culture he got started in the game and all the good stuff. We had a nice conversation. We're going to share that with you guys here coming up real soon. Before we get off into that, some other things has been uh, been been on the mind lately. Just kind of been out there circulating in the, in the atmosphere in terms of house music. One particular issue that's uh, been brought to my attention. I was uh, on Facebook a few days ago, and a, interest, a very interesting post came up and was talking about producers that actually travel the world and they spend at parties and events. Also, outside of uh, producing music, you have a lot of DJs that do that as well. They produce tracks, and real awesome at producing tracks, but... They essentially, they travel around the world and let the listeners hear some of that good music that they have produced. And so, in fact, this particular post went into the fact that maybe, just maybe, certain producers should stick to producing because their DJing skills are not up to par. And they went on to name a few names and put some some names out there that they felt like uh, some of the uh, some of the mix and some of the spinning done by this particular producer one night here in Chicago in particular he mentioned a particular night playing at a, a spot here that the uh, the quality of the mixing in other words the transition between the blends and things of that sort it wasn't up to par 
fact, uh, was mentioned that uh, the DJ, the producer, DJ, used filters along the way to cover up uh, some of the uh, subpar, some of the mediocre blends. Now, me personally, I I don't have a problem with the person that he's talking talking about in particular as a producer. I think he's an excellent DJ, but the more deeper point that I want to go into, want to share with you guys today is what do you think about producers, producers that make these banging house tracks, right? They make some of the hottest stuff that keep the dance floor moving. Keep our heads bobbing when we listening to a mix. Should they just stick with simply just produce records, stick with producing tracks, and not even bother DJing? Leave the DJing to the ones that like to spin records and blend and edit and do this type of stuff with the songs after the product is already made. And I guess the uh, sentiment is that DJs that focus exclusively on DJing it tends to do it better. Well, I'm gonna share with you in a, in a minute, a quick minute, my take on it. Cause uh, uh, my, my take on it is, is certainly different. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you my thoughts on it. But that was the whole idea. Producer, you know, hey, you, you're fantastic at producing records. Uh, every time you come out with something, we're real excited about it. We can't wait to hear what you produce. But you should just stick at producing. You know, you know, in other words, don't bother DJing. And I will tell you, I don't agree with that. Certainly don't agree with that. I think that a lot of guys that produce, guys and guys and girls to be exact, you got some female producers as well. Even though it's a male-dominated industry in terms of beat making and making tracks and stuff like that, there's some, some females out there on the circuit that do their thing too. But needless to say, needless to say, producers because they get it, they know what it takes to go in and hammer out a track, how to uh, how to start the vibe off, how to build the tracks up, how to get it to its climax, to its peak and how to break it back down and get it toward the tail end of the track. We got to break it and you exit out. Or however, what well, depends on the genre or the, the type of house music we're talking about here. But essentially, a producer knows how to arrange music. And so in my opinion, my humble opinion, producers make some of the best DJs because they get it. And usually it goes hand in hand. Usually one follows the other. And so if you DJ and you essentially get to the point where you get off into production, you're making tracks, you're making beats. And a lot of producers, if they are producing, yeah, they do know how to spin. They know how to go from one song to the next. And really, primarily with house music, we blending out of one song into the next one. We get a good three-fourths of the record out the way, maybe the whole entire uh, track. And when it gets toward the end, before it starts to fade out, we blend in the next song and we continue on. We let that play. It is ongoing for however length of time that we're playing. That's pretty much how it goes. So I don't agree with that particular sentiment that was in that Facebook post. Some producers can be some of the greatest DJs. And some of the ones that were named, I, I think they're excellent DJs and they, they have the skills to pay the bills. And so you can get out here, you can travel the world. And see, and this is the thing that you also have to look at. This, thing, this is the thing that you have to think about. DJs that are traveling the world, they're producing music, they're working with other producers, they're putting out tracks, they're consistent with that, they're doing it on a regular basis. The thing about that is, is that they're in demand. Right? They're in demand. So there are promoters, there are people in the listening audience, they, they want to hear these guys. So they're traveling for for a very unique reason. They have a purpose. And then they're in the demand. And then here's a here's another point I'd like to hammer home too. DJs and producers, producers that DJ. They have a lot in their repertoire, just in terms of music. Make a lot of stuff, a lot of material. And you 
you anticipate hearing some of that stuff when you go to these events or these conferences or these parties or whatever it is that's going on that that these cats are playing at you anticipate you as a listener right so we, let's let's just say louis vega is playing out it's coming into town you anticipating what louis is going to play you know you know you know he's constantly in the studio if it's louis louis vega dj spin etc charisma we can go on and on if it's some of these guys playing out you get a chance to catch them, or you catch uh, catch one of their mix shows or something like that. You can anticipate it's a good, good, good chance that they're gonna play something that they've created, something that they produced recently, and you wanna you wanna get first dibs on that. You wanna have your eardrums locked to that. You, you don't wanna miss out on that. So that is part of the reason why they're getting booked. They have something to offer, <laughs> bring us something to the table. And so every time you see certain names, you're gonna gravitate toward them. You you want to hear them. A lot of, we, anyone is capable in terms of DJ. As far as DJs go, any, any DJ is capable of having a, a, a bad day where things just don't go as well as you you would like them to go. Let's just be honest about that. Some of the best DJ, DJs in the world, and you can have a bad day. Things just not going well, and it really depends on the DJ and who you are, and and, and how you go about prepping, how you put out your, your your material, how you spin. Now I know for me, because I I DJ I DJ on FM radio for a long period of time, and for an extended period of time, we wasn't allowed to do tapes. We had to mix live. And so because of that, because we had to mix live, me personally, my time, my off air time, I spent a lot of time practicing and, and going through music and looking for the breaks and the best places to, to exit, to enter and exit a record. And so when Friday night would come around and it's time for me to spend live on FM radio, well, well I have my game plan together. I kind of know how I was, was going to go about attacking that thing, that beast called putting the mix together. And a lot of times, I, I would say in the early 90s, we, we were spinning live and records, would they would jump, they would skip while you're playing or while you're blending. I mean, we didn't have the quality of needles like what we got now. We, we had what was the best then, but now things are a little different nowadays. But back then, man, we then as far as me, I was young, a lot younger then, of course, <laughs> but wasn't caring for the records as as carefully as I do now. I really have a lot of respect uh, for records. Uh, some they they could have been cared for a lot better, but you know <laughs> what I mean by that was a, a lot of stuff got put in the wrong jacket, the album, wrong album cover. And uh, some records were touched up, were on top of each other. They could have handled that a little differently. But the whole point of that, that was my strategy when I was spinning. I, I would prep my mixes and, and would have it in order. Every DJ is not going to do that. And they'll grab their stuff and they'll go and they, they can wing it. And I can wing it too. It's just a matter of knowing what I'm going to play. And a lot of times, if I'm winging it, I don't know what I'm going to play. You just start spinning and it, it, it comes to you or what you're feeling or what the crowd is moving to. they moving a certain way. And they like in certain tones. You you kind of, as a DJ, if, if you've been at it for a while, you can kind of feel what direction you can go in. Because the mood and the atmosphere, is, it's going to tell you that. And so a lot of DJs can get out here and, and wing it. Not to say that all producer DJs do that, but is it possible? Yeah, I, I think so. I really think so. So just want to share that with you. Want to go over that. My thoughts on that. I'm gonna uh, gonna do going to put up a uh, going to do a blog post for that because I'm going to go a little more in depth a little more in detail about it I think it's a very interesting subject so I'm going to go into a little more detail about that uh, so be on the lookout uh, if you are not subscribed to us make sure you, you do so uh, on the uh, the ones that I mentioned earlier the, the YouTubes and uh, uh, the Facebooks Instagrams and the like the Twitter we, we, we're there it's Lloyd Dare you can hit me up on, on, on social media, on those platforms. And, you know, we got the YouTube channel going, so you can do that as well. But uh, moving right along, we get off into this Carl Bias interview. He 
you're gonna enjoy that. I ain't gonna hold you too much longer, but uh, a couple other things I want to go over. Well, one one more particular thing. Went went digging for records the other day. It's a spot here in the south suburbs of Chicago. So, uh, in fact, it's a new joint that opened up. It's called the Conservatory Vintage and Vinyl. It's in uh, the south suburbs of uh, Chicago, Flossmoor, Illinois. Went in the spot. Man, just uh, just in terms of some vintage vinyl, and, and I love it, man. I, I can get lost in the record shops when, when I go, and I know it's gonna be it's gonna be a couple of hours. So, so I try to allow myself. I, and I had the missus with me, so out of a uh, courtesy to her, right? <laughs> I didn't I didn't stay as long as I probably would have. But interesting thing uh, went down in this place has two floors of music that has some, some good stuff upstairs and then I went down in the basement of, of the building and man I just went down there man just just went bananas man I, I saw so much stuff and I uh, ended up coming out with, with, with some nice tunes man I, I've been doing a lot of uh, grabbing the 45s lately so my 45 collection is there it's, it's getting to where I want and trying to get doubles on stuff so came across some tones I'm going to be putting some mixes together and putting that stuff out there and putting it up on the clouds the, the mix clouds and the sound clouds and the like uh, so you guys can check that out but I, I did I picked up some goodies so shout out to my man Tone Beat Nimble over at the Conservatory Vintage and Vinyl Flossmore, Illinois if you ever in the city Looking to get some records, I would recommend you go by there and check them out. You know, patronize them, get your tunes on. You know, plus, they also sell some other uh, vintage collectible stuff up in there. So it's a real nice spot. And there's some eats around there, too. You want to want to do some some dining, grab you some lunch. Nice little spots in the area. It's a real, like it's downtown Flossmore. And, uh, man, you will have a ball. So that's my recommendations for you. So going to wrap it up. And uh, get started with this interview with Carl Bias, Master C and J. So uh, Master C and J consists of Carl Bias and Jesse Jones, and Edward Get Down Crosby, Lugo Rosado, and maybe some more. Let them think Liddell Townsell, uh, to a certain extent, what was around and helping these guys, and they were putting out stuff. And uh, so. Carl goes into that in his interview, man. It is, it's, 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 a, it's a deep interview, and I learned some stuff that I didn't know. I've been knowing Carl for years, and I learned and found out some stuff that, that I didn't know. But that's what this podcast is all about, and we take the time, uh, fade the music down, and to go into this stuff because there's some people you wanna you wanna hear from, and you just don't you don't get that on on a regular when you just you listening to the mixes and you don't get the full story. So here it is. We're we gonna get off in the Carl Bias, who has worked with a number of different people from Liz Torres to Screaming Rachel. Tracks records they they work, they've done some stuff. You know, as I mentioned, Edward Crosby and Liddell Townsend. He's also done some work with Spike Rebel uh, here uh, in Chicago and also Darren Brandon. They they've done some man <laughs> and put out some stuff. And he's also, as of late, as of late, has uh, has some stuff on Chicago House Recordings. And if you don't know, that's the sister of Chicago House Radio. Chicago House Recordings is the record label uh, for Chicago House Radio. And Carl Byers has some stuff on there as well. So we're going to get in there. We're going to talk about all that. But uh, once again... Thanks for hanging out. This is Lloyd Dev of Chicago House Radio. You're listening to the Chicago House Radio podcast. This is episode number two. And it's myself hosting an interview with Carl Bias of Master C and J. Don't forget if you ever want to hit us up, you want to shoot us an email, you can do so. You can do so at info at chicagohouseradio.com. Info at chicagohouseradio.com. It's a good way to reach out to us. Someone in particular you would like uh, to see on the show, the upcoming show, uh, do so. Shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. You know, you can also hang with us on the Facebook page at the Chicago House Radio Facebook page and go and search us on Facebook. Come on in, hit the like button, and, uh, and stay connected with us. And this is how we do it, so... No further delay. We can get off into that interview. It's uh, Lloyd Dare, along with Carl Bias of Master C and J. Enjoy. 
All right, it's uh, Lloyd Day for Chicago House Radio as we get started in our series of our podcast here on Chicago House Radio. We try to interview the best, best in the business, those who have been in the game for quite some time. And this next guy that we bring in, he's uh, no stranger to being in the game for a long period of time. In fact, he has uh, so much to offer that uh, we could talk for hours just uh, going over <laughs> some of the things that he's done in this industry, <laughs> this thing that we call house music. And so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to welcome aboard Carl Byers from Master CNJ. Carl, what's going on, man? What's going on, Mr. Bell? How you be, man? Man, it's it's good, man. You know, we, we're trying to do some good things around here at Chicago House Radio and I thought it would be a good a good idea, a good period to cut off the music and talk to some of the best in the industry and talk about some of the things that they've done in the past and what they're currently doing and uh, what we can expect from them going forward in the future. So this is the whole idea behind the Chicago Grounds Radio podcast. And uh, you're actually the, the second second person, the second installment uh, of the show. As, mm-hmm. uh, we, as we get things on the way. And, you know, I like to talk to my, my good friends, my peeps, and people that have been around for a while and uh, kind of understand the industry. They know the game. They know uh, how things go and uh, have some kind of insight in terms of going forward, man. So, man, tell us a little bit, man, how, how did Master C&J get started for all those that do not know? How did Master C&J get started or how did Carl Bias get started? Well, let, let's start with, with – Master C and J, and then we can uh, we can see how <laughs> Carl Byers played a part in that. And then you know we we gonna have to later lead off into you coming on board with Chicago House Radio and Chicago House Recordings and the uh, EP that we did a while back. So we we can get into that. But tell us about Master C and J. How did you guys meet? Um, I took a job at um, Loop Records. Remember when Loop Records was on Jackson? Downtown Chicago, yes. Yeah, yeah, downtown Chicago, Jackson, right off of, you know, before you get to State Street. Yeah, Michigan. Yeah, I remember that. Exactly. And, um, you know, I went, went in there and took a job, started, you know, selling records with Jesse Jones, and um, we just got to, you know, talking about stuff. And um, he didn't know, you know, that I make music. So Jesse Jones, now, for, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who do not know, uh, That's Jesse Master Jones is, is is one. He's the J in C and J. Exactly. Uh, Jesse Jones, he's one one of the members of uh, of the group, Master C and J. So that's who he's referring to. But, but go ahead, Carl. So t- tell tell me. You I, know, I um, there was a, worked at Loop. I never yeah, that. I wow. worked I worked at Loop Records for a while, man. Wow. And um. You know, it was so cool. You know, it was this white guy that came in. He had a a label called Sound Pack. Right. And he did something, you know, some crazy-ass song. But he did something with Larry Sherman. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jesse's like, that's how No More Mind Games came out. So, I met the, the guy from Sound Pack who walked into Loop Records Rick, one day? Rick, yeah, Rick C-Pack. He walked in there and... Now, he's like, hey, man, you know, I got this record. I'm trying to promote it and blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, Jesse came to me and he's like, you know, let's let's try to do something with this guy. Okay, we did it. And, you know, the funniest thing is that's where Liz Torres came out and stuff like that. We did No More Mind Games Quest. So how did how did you guys meet Liz Torres? Is she, she's the one who did Well, Liz Torres guy. was Jesse... Jesse's girlfriend at that time. Really? Yeah. Okay. And Ladell Townsville, he don't get no credit, which is real tripped out. It was myself, Ladell, that did the music. On No More Mind Games? Yep. Never knew that. So, yeah, and as far as credit, yeah, we we, we never knew that. I never known that. Uh, then, uh, you know the music business, man. It's hard, man. I mean, it, 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 it's tripped out and it's hard, but it was cool. Liddell walked away from the deal. Okay. And until this day, you know, he's still 
has a problem with that. You know, him and Jesse. Okay, that's fine. So well, yeah, so let, let, let's yeah, so we don't get off track here. So the, the guy, CPAC, the guy comes in with the record label. So you guys, y'all hook up and do uh, mind games. Mm-hmm. And it, so that's, that's the first started. one you guys put out. So what we that was the what, first one. Yep, that was the first one, and I believe the second one is um, when you hold me on Larry Sherman's label, and then we did face it. So State Street Records. Now, so who who's, uh, whose label is that one? The State Street Records. That the was um, the owner of Loop Records. That was. I figured that. Okay. Yeah, that was their label. Okay. All right, and so were you guys the first to come out on that label? Yep. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. So when you hold me, then you guys did face it, mm-hmm. uh, following up behind that. Wow. And then we did um, Pleasure Pump, and, you know, if you look at, you know, the list, I, I can't remember. I mean, that's so – but we did a number, of, a number of jingles, man. I mean, you know, a number of tunes on that song. I mean, you know, on that label. So, because uh, um, Marco Spoon, remember Marco Spoon? He even did something on State Street, and I did a I mix on this stuff. Yeah, yep. I remember that. So, who are all the members now? I, we got Jesse Jones, we got Carl Bias. No, Lugo Rosado comes in right. place somewhere. Right. And uh, Liz Torres. That's when you guys did the CPAC thing when y'all yeah. was on that label, the Quest. Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. And then so you guys after that moved on to State Street Records and then just the owner of Loop Records, so yeah, you guys come out. Y'all was yeah, say but it's it's one uh that y'all missing that it was uh, this and correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was before Face It in the city. Oh, that was Edward Crosby. That was Edward Crosby did that? Yep. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, that, was, that was one of my favorite tones. I, I man. The, the man, them horns, and yeah, that's just one of my favorite. The bass that, line, that was that. A, yeah, that was Ever Crosby. Got to get okay. credit with him too. All right, yeah, yeah, awesome tune, man. And used to used to wear that out on WKKC. I would play that all the time. This was before I met any of you guys. This is during that time period, and man, I, I was wearing it out. And of course, you know, facet and mind games and all this stuff. You, you guys, you, you already know. I'm not telling you something you don't already know. But as a result. <laughs> As a result of these things, what 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 happened going forward? I know you guys started touring. You started uh, doing national stuff and international stuff. T- tell us about that. How did that work out? We talking about as far as I'm, like touring and stuff like that. Yeah, I know you guys went to a whole lot of places. Oh, it, it was nice, did. man. I mean, you know, when you get a chance to go to a different country, you know, it, it, it it's like. It's not a black white issue. It's an American, whatever country you're going to issue. Okay. It makes you a very liberal person. When you start seeing things in a different set of eyes. So maybe, what was, well, so what, what well, was the first country out you guys went to? England. You went to England. Okay. And that what was the response over there because you know, during this time, house music is steady growing. The popularity of it is spreading. People mm-hmm. go buck wild, and we couldn't imagine that some somewhere outside of America that it, it was picking up the way that it did. Well, I'm one of the founders, myself, Burt Bevins, and um, Justin Berkman. We started the Ministry of Sound. Okay. Me as a DJ, mm-hmm. um, we started that because you know Frankie Knuckles. None of these guys they didn't know nothing about. Justin Berkman, they're like, who the hell is this guy? I don't want to go over there. So the Ministry of Sound, you so that, uh, I'm quite sure you were DJing before before you guys started making records, correct? Yeah. Okay. All right, so tell us about the Ministry of Sound. What, what, who are the people what, involved what, in that? What started that was myself and Burt Bevins. Okay. Okay, Justin, he came to America, and he came, and he seen Larry LeVan. The Paradise Garage. He loved it. Now his father is a part of um, Parliament. You know, it's like senators. You know what I'm saying, right? Now he got this club, and um, he wanted to get American DJs to come over. Nobody would come over because number one, nobody knew who the hell he was. You know, he, he you know he talked to Frankie. 
Cuban Register, I mean, Louis Vega, you know, the whole nine, all the top DJs. They're like, okay. who's this asshole? You know, we're not going over there. Burt Bevins and myself, I lived in London for a year. Burt okay. Bevins, he still lives in London. We got it going on, and they started, you know, we called them, and they're like, okay, we're going to come and do this. We were the ones that made it possible for American DJs to go overseas. So so at that particular time, before you guys, it was kind of unfounded. The guys weren't really traveling overseas like that. No, they weren't. I mean, they didn't know anything. You know, everybody, you know, you call, you know, they, they call themselves the chosen few. They've been around. I've been around a little longer. A lot of people didn't know that. See, okay, well, yeah, that's that's like what I was just saying. So you've definitely been DJing longer than you've been producing music. And I, I, was yeah. like, I think that's how a lot of guys start out anyway. Yeah. The, the DJ culture and end up they, start making records. Well, they used to fly me. When I hooked up with Frankie, Frankie put me in touch with the T. Scotts, the Larry LeVans, and all that. I used to go... Every Friday, they used to fly me every Friday to play Better Days. I'm a Better Days DJ. Yeah, I so, came so from Better now, Days. So, so now, what what is Better Days? Man, that was one of the hottest clubs, man, in New York that you could ever go to. Okay. That was right underneath the Paradise Garage, man. Wow. T. Scott used to play at Better Days, and they used to fly me there. And I used to play every Saturday night at Better Days with T. Scott. That's amazing. So this is about the mid-'80s or so? Yeah. Yeah, T. Scott, uh, awesome DJ. And, uh, oh, yeah. God bless him. I miss him much, yeah, man. Yeah, rest in peace. Uh, awesome DJ. So Ministry of Sound, and we, we go to Quest, and then we go to Master C&J. And we get around and call by. So you you continue to put out uh, music. You enterprise. You hooked up with, with other guys, and you you did some other projects going forward at the Master C and J. Why don't you tell us about that? Started Velvet City Records. I worked with um Darren Brandon, Sherman Rogers, um yes. Tony Washington. We started Velvet City Records. And awesome. you know it's the funniest thing. We made a statement. And who was the first artist that I brought out on the label? Lenny Fontana, <laughs> who is one of the top, baddest DJs in the world right now. Yes. And, yes. you know, I mean, I'm going to start this label back up again and make it happen. Man, where's all that good Velvet City stuff, man? See, now, you should make me go dig it, man. I, I just remember <laughs> that, that era, the early 90s, man. It just, that, you, you guys was cranking out some stuff, man. I'm up in heaven. Yeah, I'm up in heaven, man. color of music. Oh, oh, man. you talking about some good music, man. It's just that era, that early 90s, man, that, that soulful underground stuff, mm -hmm. that jazzy, man, that, that that had had that little swing to it, man. It was just some some awesome stuff, man. What what what? You know, it was the music that made people want to dance, man. Yes. It's not like this conflict that's going on now. You know, it was something where people went to a club, they heard the song, they heard a Velvet City song, and they loved it. Yeah, you you guys got it in with that band. It was, every time I see that label come, I I just snatch it and just start playing because I already know it's some good stuff. And then really, it wasn't a tough sale for me. I already know I was getting a good product. I just, I, and that was with any label. If you 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 build a rapport with with, with DJs mm -hmm. when you're putting out good stuff, all they need to do is just basically see the label, see the names of the people involved, and they're gonna get it and they're gonna play it. That's what I was talking about. And, you know, a lot of things change right now. And one of my problems, one of my biggest problems since you're interviewing me is the north side versus the south side. I'm talking about Chicago. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I don't want to play here. But, you know, I mean, well, I, you, I, I, you, you, you play everything. 
you as a DJ, you play everything. And I admire that, man, because you hurt. You play and you hurt them hard, which is a good thing. But, you know, okay, old school is cool. You know, you play disco. I mean, right. there's nothing wrong with that. Don't don't get me wrong. I have nothing against disco. Mm-hmm. But the North Side plays new stuff. See, mm-hmm. you play everything. Yeah, and, and a lot of And I want a lot of DJs to play everything. Yeah, and my 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 response to that in with, with me doing that a, a lot of people they they don't accept it and it's just a matter you just you you go ahead Because you have to introduce it to them. You, you, they don't accept it because they don't know about it. Well, I introduce it when I play it, but like I say once again, you still get some you know, some resistance. Well, you can't please people. everybody. Uh, yeah, and I, I always, I, I've understood that from day one. You never will. You you go ahead and be, be yourself and play whatever it is you're going to play. And those that mm-hmm. like it, they will check it out. And those that don't, obviously they won't. But, you know, that, that's that been one of the things going. I mean, you just, you find out what you like. You as a DJ and as a presenter, you, you pick out the tones and you play it for your audience. Mm-hmm. That, that's the way I always looked at it. Right. I agree. So that's that. I mean, yeah, we 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 have these these differences between the north and the south. They they do exist. There's uh, certain barriers and things that suck, man. But you know, we uh, once again we we get this stuff. It's a lot of music nine days, way more than what we were getting back then. Then plus you still have that stuff to play in addition to all the newer mm-hmm. stuff that comes out now. And so mm-hmm. it gets to the point. You have to consistently be putting out stuff in, in exactly. order to, to, uh, to stay recognized for what you're doing. You, you got you got to stay in the air. It's 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 a whole new um, generation right now with this digital downloads and all this stuff. I mean, it's you know everybody's like, I can't do it, and I'm gonna admit to that I can't do it. But there's you know DJs that are producers that are putting out like what five songs a week or stuff like that. I can't, I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think maybe a more consistent thing would be at least once a month, uh, once every other month or something like that. But yeah. then it's, it, it, it boils down to quality. It boils yeah. Down to quality. Because that's you what it is. People are putting stuff out, but they're not really listening to the, quality of the stuff they're putting out. They're putting yeah. stuff out just to stay in the game. You're right. Right. That's you the, have to put stuff out and you have to listen to what you put out. Yes. And make sure it's tight. You know, I'm I talked to Timmy Legisford, you know, all these people. Louis Vega, Dave Morales, what are you guys doing, man? You're putting stuff out and half of this stuff is crap, man. Mm-hmm. Just to stay in the game, listen to what you're doing mm-hmm. and put the right stuff out. Yeah, don't, well, put, it... don't just jam the market. Put the right stuff out. That's it, man. I think that's the uh, the key to success right there, man. We, we have to continue to do that, man. And the, the days that go by that we're not doing that or cranking out good stuff, then, you know, we're going to get the backlash from that thing because you, you people are not going to be receptive to you. They're going to say, well, okay. Uh, exactly. You're just, you're just putting stuff out just to put stuff out and have your name out there. That's that's not right. Put the right stuff out. Yeah. I said, I agree, man. So what, what, what do you got, uh, what you got coming up, man? I know we, we oh, got I got a few things. <laughs> you know, we, we did we, we did the EP uh, back in, uh, what was that, 2017, 2018, mm-hmm. the, the then, now, and forever. For those of you that didn't get that, make sure you get that. Mm-hmm. And by the way, just, just as we move along, and let, let everybody know, it's Chicago House Radio Podcast. It's Lloyd Dev. We're having a conversation with Carl Bias, Master C and J and many others, as he does solo projects, nine days, he hooks up. We're doing stuff. We got stuff lined up. You got stuff with other people lined up. So what, what oh, can you we about, you about, you, from you? Well, you're about to drop a Master CNJ um, project called The Freak. 
Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get we get that lined up. That's in the works. So we're working on that, man. Have some good people that uh, the good people of Master CNJ. We we put that together, man. So we we in the works of doing that. Uh, this is the the slowest season in terms of pressing and putting stuff out. But beginning of the year, I know it picks up. You know, and uh, next we'll year we're gonna hit them. We go, next year we're gonna hit them hard. Yes, yes, indeed. Cause this man. Dead, this the dead time right now. Everybody, nobody's bringing nothing out. They they do it, but what what it is, they already had it scheduled, and so exactly. it's just the, the the year end releases, and that's what's going on with that. It's, you know, now it's to the point. Okay, we're gonna crank this stuff out now. It's the end of the year. The dates have been set on it already, and we've just been rolling with it. So, but we we do have some stuff in the works, and it's coming coming up getting the new year. And, uh, well, we'll hey, get this stuff out, man. I got stuff. You got you got some some of my stuff. You already got it. You just ain't saying nothing yet, but you got it. <laughs> and then I'm giving you more stuff. Since yeah. I bought my new and since I bought my new toy, well, yeah, I'm gonna the, give you even more stuff. The new toy <laughs> and and how how's that coming along with, with, with your new toy? As far as your project oh god, is concerned. oh god, yeah. it it's coming. I'm yeah. going there. That's good stuff, man. The production tools, man. The, uh, <laughs> I'm going there. Good, good. So you've been able to crack the, the thing open and get get it explored. Oh, I, I'm cracked. I'm cracked the nut and seen the shells inside. I'm like, oh man. I'm like, oh man, this is fun. So I've been playing with it. not not as much as I like to, because you know, mm-hmm. I got to do what I got to do. But uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Ain't nothing like, like having new new tools in your arsenal, uh, so that you man, can, you know how we are, man. We, we, you know, we ain't nothing. Boy, we're big kids, man. Absolutely, and we get excited <laughs> when we get these new instruments uh, to help make what we do a lot easier, right? Man, I'm looking at this stuff. I'm like, okay, <laughs> and I'm playing yeah. with. I'm like, okay. Yeah, man. It, it, it's, and and, and it gets to the, but it gets to the point where. You got songs you need to finish, but now you create new songs because you're like, wow. You know what I mean? So let me finish creating, you know, finish the stuff I need to finish and then create new tones. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and see, when, you, when you're when constantly working, you, you start off on a project, and even if you hit writer's block, you know at some mm-hmm. point you want to go back and pick it back up and continue from where you left off because you – you you got some in the incubator, and it it well it's, you know to take off for you. <laughs> you know I'm I'm just gonna say this man. I'm in a city where I have friends that I can count on one hand, and you're one of them. And I'm gonna tell you what man, you guys, if I have writer's block, I can send the files to you. And I'm quite sure you're taken from there or anybody else. And, you know, the friends I have on one hand, I love you guys immensely because, you know what, we make shit happen. Absolutely. And you know what, we're going to keep it going. All these other people, it's irrelevant. I'm not worried about that. When I have friends that I can turn to, I know you guys got my back, man. And I'm cool with that. That's what the music is about, man, and it's it's so it's so bigger than us, man. That it ex, it expands itself to these these different areas of our lives. It man. is bigger than us, man. Absolutely, and that's it's, why we do what we do. It's, I mean, it's bigger than us. But you know what? We're not out here trying to, um, you know, get this whatever. We out here. We're doing it because we love what we do. And when yeah. you love what you do, things do happen. All cool. these other, all these other people, I have no comment on that. <laughs> so, where, where where do you see house music going, uh, the future and beyond, man? The next ten years, how do you see things going? Just in terms, oh of- man, I see house music in general. Yeah, man, it's gonna be a mainstream. It's a mainstream now, and you know the funniest thing is, overseas is making that happen. House music is what we do. We created it, and it's going to keep going. That's it. It's not going nowhere. 
That's it, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it from him. It's Carl Bias. Got him on board. It's Chicago House Radio Podcast. Keep these things going, man. Carl, you know, you got to come on back through, man, and bless the decks and play some of that good music you got. <laughs> no. Some of that stuff you, you done produced that you haven't let us hear yet. Oh, you got the stuff in the works, man. We ready to hear Oh, you know, I got some stuff for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can come on out with that, man. We we ready to get, get to rolling around here. We want, want to hear well, let's, some stuff. Well, let's get together, man. Let's do yeah. what we got to do. And, um, you know, we'll go out and have a little bite to eat or, I'll, you know, we'll order something. You know, just have a good time. That's how we do it, man. Well, well thanks so much, man, for, for jumping on the call and spending some time. You know, we got to have you back. And like I say, man, it, it's to the point where I saw a point to stop the music and talk directly, talk directly mm-hmm. to, the, to the movers and the shakers around here and just see what they do behind the scenes. What, what, what's the everyday life for you? What, what, what do you do? in terms of uh, not only the music and the culture, but just you as a person, you know, what, what, what's your, what's your day like? Uh, what, what you got on your mind? What, what's inspiring you? What, what's moving you forward? And a lot of times we don't have these kind of conversations, right? We just hear the music. We hear the music and we see, mm-hmm. you know, guys performing, but that in-depth conversation, man, that one-on-one that sit by, by the fireplace and, and having a little conversation. That's, that's what, the whole goal behind these Chicago's radio podcasts is just talk. Well, talk that's what head. they need. That's that's what you know. That's what the world of Chicago. I mean, that's what they need to know. I mean, I've known you damn near forever, <laughs> but you know, the world don't know that. You right. know, I mean, people need to know and what's going on and how we are. You know, right. there's some arrogant. I'm not one of them. <laughs> I'm not an arrogant prick. Hey. I do what I got to do from sun up to sundown. On the weekends, this is the only time I can do my thing. Okay. But you know what? I do talk to people, and I look them in the eye and say, how you doing? Well, if they if they they come to me, I come to them, how you doing? I don't diss nobody. And what I say to that, I think that that's fair. I think that's fair. That's it being is fair. A, an adult. It, it's fair, man. Because you know what? I mean, I wouldn't be making the money I'm making if they weren't paying to come and see me or come hear me play. You see what I'm saying? I if people that. are paying twenty, twenty five dollars to come hear my ass play, well, you know what? The right thing is when they come up to me, how you doing? I said, and you you reciprocal. I mean, you you return it back to them. Exactly. Yeah, well, it's definitely good to to do that, man, because, like I say, a a lot of people that support us, they don't know us on a personal basis, but when we can take time out like what we're doing now. Exactly. Just sit back, because I learned some stuff today. I I mean, you, you, as far as loop records, and that was one of the main spots I I would hit. We we talk about record shops in Chicago. That would be one. You had Mm -hmm. imports, records. And gramophone. Grandma yeah, imports, yep. Yeah, yeah. Those were the, yep. were the spots, man. And yeah, I, yep. I know Lil John that, that was working down there at, uh, at Loop Records too. And so that's how I met him. And then plus he was on KKC too. So. But it's just a, <laughs> a, a, a <laughs> just well, man. I mean, we 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 we're so closely connected, and we don't even know it a lot of times. Y'all get it. Lil John came down there after I left. Okay, that that was after you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, it, it's cool because, see, to know the music, you have to be in the music. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't realize that. I, and, but they do realize it because, you know, I, I was talking to my cousin at Dale Townsend. Okay. And he told me something that really freaked me out. He said, Carl, I only do music. You are a legend. You played at places that nobody played. I'm like, really? I never thought yeah. about it like well, that. You never think about it like that, absolutely, because you you constantly <laughs> doing what you do. You don't. He was like, like you are a legend. Yeah. You you were one of Frankie's boys. You knew T. Scott, Larry LeBan. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Ted Patterson. He's man. You knew the top dudes. 
you played for them. And this chosen few, you know, I'm not, I'm not dissing them, but he said, dude, you are bigger than that. Okay. Because okay. you knew these guys that are not here no more. Well, definitely Larry LeVan and T. Scott, Frankie oh, Douglas, man. Ron Hardy. We, we I, I miss, I miss, I'm, you know, I miss those guys so much, man. Yeah, yeah, we, we lost. You know when you, nice, man. you know when you feel like, you know, you're out here by yourself. You know, like you're the last of your religion. You know what I mean? You're the last of your religion and, because there's and, nobody else that can do it the way you do it. Yeah, and it's what you do going forward. Exactly. <laughs> so we have to uh, yeah, keep this thing going, man. And that's why we do what we do. We play the music and we talk about it. Yep. And, uh, we have to. Well, hey, it, man. man. So that's it, man. Well, thanks, all right, man. that's we cool. But hey, man, out, out we do. And talking with no, us, man. We, don't we, worry we, about we it, man. Appreciate <laughs> it. You know, we needed that. <laughs> Nothing but much love, man. Hey, man, I talk to you to do this podcast, and I'll talk to you as a friend because you're my friend, too. That's what we do, man. That's it. That's it, man. Well, thanks for hanging. We're going to wrap it up. It's uh, Carl Bias, ladies and gentlemen. He's on Chicago House Radio, the <laughs> podcast. And, you know, we could go on and on and on because there's so many different aspects. No, okay. uh, you know, we're going to we're gonna have to get you back in here, man, and we're going to uh, chop it up. So we'll do it. more in this game. And all that good stuff, man, because uh, it's those kind of stories, man, the stuff that mm-hmm. we don't know about. Now, I know you got some stories. I know you, man. We ain't, we ain't even broke the ice. I know you, know you got some stories, man. You old now, but I know you got them. We're we going we, we gonna to unpack that. We're going to get off into that. Real stuff. Real stuff. Yeah. All right, you, brother, you, man. You, uh, hey, it's all good. Hey, you, you know what I'm talking about. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we, we'll get off into it, man. But, look, hey, man, it's been nice. And, uh, man, we, 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 we'll keep in touch like we normally do, man. And uh, we'll, we'll be doing some stuff going forward. All right, brother. Best of luck, man. You take care of yourself, man. All right, Carl. Until All right. Week. Peace out. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Bias, Master T and J, Quest, Velvet City Records, all the good stuff. We're going to have them back on here once again. But, you know, you're in the right place. The Chicago House Radio, the podcast, and make sure you visit us, www.chicagohouseradio.com. And don't forget about Chicago House Recordings. It's all CHR. It's Lloyd Dev and company. So we wrap it up. The Chicago House Radio Podcast. Thanks so much for listening to the Chicago House Radio Podcast. I hope you enjoyed that. Wasn't that something? Carl Bias of Master C and J. And I hope you learned a whole lot just like I did. Like I said, it was a lot of different things that went on in that interview, a lot of stuff that was revealed that I, I didn't know. <laughs> so, you know, shout out to my man, Carl Bias. Thanks so much for the interview. We're going to be working on episode number three. It's coming up, coming your way next. And if you're not subscribed to us, uh, now's the time to do so. If you're checking us out on YouTube, Hit the subscribe button. And the same goes on the social media platforms. We over on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Hit us up. Lock us in. Stay uh, locked and loaded so we can keep you informed of uh, upcoming guests, uh, shows, and podcasts, and all that good stuff. And don't forget, we're a 24-hour radio station. We're on the internet streaming. It's a product of Live 365. They do have an app that you can download, and then you can lock us in like that. Uh, ChicagoHouseRadio.com. It's the place to be to get your house on. I come on Saturday nights with Get Down Saturday Night, and that starts at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We've been doing that since the induction of Chicago House Radio. For those of you that did not know, Chicago House Radio has been around for 15 years. We just wrapped up celebrating 15 years of internet radio. And we started in December, December the 15th, actually, of 2004. And got this thing off the ground. And I, and I, I tell you real quickly, I, 
just starting out and, and want to want to do something where we open up a, a platform for DJs to come and do their thing. And I'd worked in FM radio for a long time and just ready to branch out and, and, and be able to do our own thing without being handcuffed or being limited in terms of time or any, any of those things that, that were limited in, in my opinion. We were able to have our own platform and to do our own thing. And, and since that day, since December 15, 2004, we are here and we had hundreds upon hundreds of DJs come through the doors of Chicago House Radio. And then we have some that are still with us now and they had a few that passed away. But we're still here. And uh, we're still around, man. So this is another aspect of what we do on Chicago House Radio. It's a Chicago House Radio podcast. We break the music down. And we talk directly to you. Uh, we talk with the artists. We talk with the, 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 the major players in house music. And what, the, what they're doing and what they're producing. And what they got in store for you. That's what this podcast is all about. So thanks so much for taking time out your day. You could have been doing many other things, but you you stuck in there, hung all the way to the end. Greatly appreciate it. Make sure you be looking out. Episode number three is coming your way next. You've been listening to the Chicago House Radio Podcast. I'm your host, Lloyd Dev. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Visit us on ChicagoHouseRadio.com. We stream in house music 24-7, and we got a lot to offer. So thanks so much. Catch us on the next episode, which will be episode number three. is coming your way next right here, wherever you found us. Find us at the same spot once again. Thanks so much for listening to the Chicago House Radio Podcast. I'm Lloyd Dare. Take care. You have been listening to the Chicago House Radio Podcast with Lloyd Depp. Be sure to tune in weekly to get the latest news, events, and interviews in house music. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.